everyone now we are going to discuss about mycotoxins the topic mycotoxins is going to be covered in two different parts that is part 1 and part 2 the part 1 is going to cover all about the historical background epidemiology then factors affecting mycotoxin production then biological effects of mycotoxins detection of mycotoxins and control of mycotoxin production the part 2 is going to cover the types of mycotoxins in detail. So let's begin with the part 1. So mycotoxins are going to be considered as chemical substances produced by a variety of fungi like aspergillae, rhizopus, fusarium species, etc. These mycotoxins are low molecular weight secondary metabolites produced by fungi in foods and feeds and that cause unnatural or deleterious biological changes such as mycosis, allergies or toxicosis in animals as well as in humans. And these mycotoxins are an important chronic dietary risk factor. They occur more frequently in areas with the hot and humid climate and favorable for the growth of mouse. That means this hot and humid climate is going to be more favorable for the growth of uh, these fungi. And they also be found in some sort of temperate zones also. But majorly they are going to have the more growth in hot and humid climates. Then the illness or disease that resulted from the ingestion of mycotoxin that is produced by mouth contaminated food is referred to as mycotoxicosis or mycotoxicosis. So both are going to be spelled the same way but they are going to have some different. The mycotoxis SIS is singular whereas SES is going to be of plural. So that's a slight difference in the pronunciation we will spell the same the spelling is going to be different. Then the first documented case of mycotoxins was ergotism, which is going to be caused due to the consumption of the ray grains and floor contaminated with the ergots, which is going to be produced by Claviceps purpurea, which is a type of alkaloids. And then in 1930s, tachybototoxicosis killed thousands of horses in USSR. And in 1960, about 1 lakh turkey fowls died suddenly in England, which was followed by the reported death of 14,000 ducklings and 9 outbreaks of diseases in cows. That means these are all were dead because of the unknown toxin product. In, from 1960 to 1971, US military spread million liters of toxic herbicides to destroy the vegetation used by the liberation forces for covering and foot that means for the covers as well as the foot the food stored for longer periods are going to give a greater opportunity to contaminate and this is going to be seen significantly in uh, developed countries death cases that means the longer period of storage of the food is going to be seen a significant cause for the death in developed countries so where you are going to have the maximum of the food is going to be in the containers or the packed food. So which may be one of the cause of uh, death cases. So based on the data given by Pitch and colleagues, it was seen that a number of deaths caused by liver cancer were due to aflatoxins that was found in Indonesia. Then even acute fatalities have been reported in India caused by aflatoxin poisoning due to unseasonal rains. So this is all about the epidemiology of mycotoxins. Then uh, coming to the foods and feeds found to contain mycotoxins. So we are having a variety of food and feeds uh, that is going to contain mycotoxins. They are going to include like grains, nuts, peas, beans, kernels, flour, wine, meat, milk, butter, cheese, bread, tobacco, hemp egg, juices and many more. Okay. Then here are the list of the fungi and here are the list of the substrate and the toxin that is going to be released by them. So for example, here if we take the aspergillus flavors, it's going to be the major substrate in mage, groundnut, oil seeds and cotton seeds. And the toxin that is going to be released by it is aflatoxin. And majority of the aspergillus are going to have the same name that is aflatoxin. The toxin that is being released 
by the Aspergillus species are going to be named as aflatoxins. Then you are going to have a, a special type Aspergillus ocaricius uh, is going to be mainly seen in the ba uh, bakery uh, wheat where that toxin is going to be called as ocartoxin. Okay, then fusarium species we call them as fumonisins and they are also having the different names in it and they are going to be of wheat, barley, maize uh, substrates. Then Claviceps purpurea we have already discussed it's on ray which is an ergot alkaloid. Then stachybotrys is going to be in the hay which is going to have the toxin name as satrot toxins. Okay, so these are the few examples of the fungi species, substrates and the mycotoxins. Then moving to the factors that are affecting the mycotoxin production are going to be of genetics, environmental and nutritional factors greatly affect the formation of mycotoxins. Depending upon the susceptibility of the crop, geographic and seasonal factors as well as the cultivation, harvesting, storage and transportation practices are all going to be involved in the mycotoxins production worldwide. In the field, weather conditions, plant stress, invertebrate vectors, species and the spore load of infective fungi and the variations within plant and fungal species and microbial competition, these all significantly are going to affect the mycotoxin productions. The physical factors such as time of exposure, temperature during the exposure, humidity and the extent of insect or other damage to the commodity prior to expose determine mycotoxin contamination in the field or during storage. So these are the physical factors. Then coming to the chemical factors such as nutritional status of the crops or chemicals used in crop management could affect fungal populations and consequently toxin production. In general, Mycotoxins are optimally produced at 24 to 28 degrees centigrade, but some toxins such as T2 toxin is maximally produced at 15 degrees centigrade. And the contamination during crop storage may be affected by changes in temperature and water activity that allow the ecological succession of a different fungi as a water activity. So these are the certain factors, physical factors, chemical factors and the environmental factors, nutritional factors which are going to affect the mycotoxin production. Then coming to the types of mycotoxins, uh, these types of mycotoxins we will discuss in detail uh, in the part 2. Now we are just going to have the names of these toxins. So Coming to the types of mycotoxins, more than 150 mycotoxins uh, are going to be produced by 150 species of fungi have been reported to be capable of uh, producing mycotoxins. That means nearly 150 species of fungi are going to be reported which are having the capability of producing mycotoxins. And the new mycotoxins are found each year and the toxin producing ability is going to vary with the genera species and strains okay so in addition to the toxin production this toxin production is dependent on many factors as we already discussed about the genetical potential environmental conditions light aeration inhibitors competitive growth etc that in the previous uh, thing we have discussed okay so here are we are going to discuss some important mycotoxins and they're producing Organism. So, for example, if we check the aflatoxin is the name of the toxin, which is being produced by Aspergillus flowers, Aspergillus parasiticus. Then citronin is going to be produced by Penicillium citrinum, Penicillium ubidactum. And cyclopiagonic acid is by Aspergillus species like flowers, tenures, and Penicillium cyclopium. Then ergotoxins, that is all floids, by Claviceps purpurea. Then luteoskyrin is by Penicillium eilandiacum. Then ochratoxins is by Aspergillus ocaricus and Penicillium viridactum and Penicillium viricosum. And here are some more mycotoxins. So here patulin is going to be produced by Penicillium species as well as the Aspergillus species. And along with these two, Bisoclamius nivea is also involved in the production of this patulin.
then pencilinic acid obviously all the majority of the penicillium species are involved in the production of pencilinic acid then rocky fortin is by pencilium rocky forti rubra toxin is by pencilium rubra tianogenic acid is by alternaria species and then stereigmomatocystin sorry stereigmatocystin is going to be aspergillus varicicolor and aspergillus nudulans so few more types of mycotoxins or like uh, deoxynevalinol which is going to be vomitoxin produced by fusarium graminarium then fusarinon x is going to be fusarium nivelli then neosaloniol is by fusarium solani then nivalinol is by fusarium nivel as well as fusarium rosium then fusar toxin t2 is by fusarium cryptinum then fusarium solani and fusarium rosium and xeralinone is going to be by fusarium species like graminarium triticum or calmorum or rosium okay so these are the different types of mycotoxins we will discuss the important types of mycotoxins in detail in part 2 then coming to the structure of mycotoxin so here you can see the different structures of uh, different um, mycotoxins so this is the aplotoxin structure then this is a fuminosin that means the toxins produced by fusarium species then patulin structure then xeralinone citronin and deoxyne valinol okay this is a ochratoxin a structure then coming to the biological effects of mycotoxin the ingestion of mycotoxins may cause either the short term effects or the long term effects that is you are going to have the short term effects or the long term effects so what is going to happen in this short term effects and the long term effects the short term effects are also called as acute effects are going to be rapid and sometimes it is going to be fatal in this acute mycotoxicosis symptoms include such as headache feverish uh, that is you feel a feverish feeling you won't have the fever but you will feel a feverish feeling nausea vomiting then diplopia diplopia means you are having the double vision everything is going to be seen in two two then weakness then bloody diarrhea and tremors so tremors means that there will be a rhythmic shaking movement in one or more parts of the body that means you cannot ha have the control of it which we call it as involuntary uh, shaking they may be including some chills and the skin irritation so these are the certain symptoms that you are going to find in the short term effects or the acute effects then coming to the second time that is long term effects or the chronic effects here it is going to have the include of genetic as well as birth defects as well as cancer which may occur after a number of years of ingestion of mycotoxins so this is going to show its effect after a long time so it may be of a genetical modification that we call it as mutation or some sort of birth defects that is going to occur okay so these are the biological effects of mycotoxins that we are going to get then moving to the uh, certain physiological effects that you are going to get for example if we take the mycotoxin aflatoxin it's going to be a carcinogenic that means it causes the cancer in the same manner if we take the citronin is going to be a nephrotoxin that this nervous system is going to be affected then fuminosin is going to be carcinogenic as well as hepatotoxic then you are going to have a trichotechins which is going to be of cytotoxic as well as immunosuppressive okay then ochratoxin is going to have a different effects depending upon the type of producing organism if it is aspergillus obviously it is carcinogenic if it is penicillium it is going to be of nephrotoxic or hepato or tera or teratogenic then patulin is going to be of a carcinogenic immunotoxic genotoxic then xeralinone is going to be estrogenic activity potential carcinogenic and teratogenic so these are the certain physiological effects that are going to be shown on mammalian cells due to the consumption of these mycotoxins then moving to the detection so two types of tests have been developed for the assay of mycotoxins that is physiochemical and as well as the biological as there are many different types of uh, mycotoxin no single test is applicable 
for all the mycotoxins. So as a result, different methods have been developed, but different toxins. So scanning the contaminated grains and seeds with long wavelength of UV light of about three, uh, that is 365 nanometers and watching for a bright greenish yellow, that is BGY fluorescence, is the simplest test for my, that is mycotoxins. So especially you are going to find that one in the aplotoxins. Then even the liquid chromatography system has also been used to determine aplotoxins in various Systems using TLC, that is thin layer chromatography, have been used to detect ochrotoxin A, patchulin, stigmatocystin, then trichothins and xeralinone. Then certain immunoassays like uh, radioimmunoassay and ELISA have also been developed in finding out or diagnosing out these aflatoxins. Then coming to the new technology of spectrophotometry technique is being also used in the finding of or detecting the mycotoxins. Then coming to the second type of uh, biological methods, there are several systems for uh, biological assays of aflatoxin. More commonly used is in chick embryo test. That means in this test, a specific amounts of uh, what we call aflatoxin is deposited in fertile egg. And in a positive result, the life of the embryo is destroyed. So this is what it is happening. And nowadays, we are also having a tissue culture where the primary fetal bovine kidney cells were taken. And recently, newer techniques have been also be used, which includes uh, patterns of isoenzyme electrophoresis, DNA-DNA homology, then restriction fragment length polymorphism. So these are the certain... Uh, tests that are being used to detect the mycotoxins in the food samples. Then moving to the control of mycotoxins. How, how can we prevent the mycotoxins production in our food? So the first one, prevention of toxigenic fungal contamination. So if you won't allow the fungi to grow, obviously there will be no chance for the mycotoxins to present. Then the prevention of fungal growth by manipulating the storage conditions. So if you are going to alter the temperatures, so obviously the fungi cannot grow. Then destroying the organisms by UV or gamma radiations. Then removal of toxin by segregating the contaminated grain or kernels or by extraction of the food with solvents. Then inactivation of mycotoxins by either chemical or by physical treatment. So if you are going to follow these all, we may control the mycotoxins. This is all about the part one. In the part two, we are going to discuss in detail about the types of mycotoxins in detail. Thank you.